This apartment belongs to Victor, a web developer and sports lover who recently moved from Brazil to Canada. In this video, I'll be virtually transforming the living area of his apartment based in Montreal, Canada. Stay along till the end for my furniture recommendations so you can recreate a similar look in your own home. Victor's one bedroom apartment has a total internal area of 53 square meters with an open plan kitchen, living and dining area. The apartment has beautiful timber flooring and opens up onto a huge east-facing window. Although I suspect it may get dark pretty quickly as the sun moves to the west. One thing that immediately struck my attention was the exposed ceiling. While this look is not for everyone, it can be easily incorporated into a stunning modern interior. Victor's wish list for this project was pretty brief. He expressed that he didn't need a dining area as he had a preference for a place to work from home in the living room instead. There weren't any pressing requirements for the work from home area, besides the fact that he didn't require a desktop computer as he prefers to use his MacBook for work. I wanted to take advantage of the exposed ceiling and beautiful timber flooring as there were standout points of this apartment. I therefore searched for inspiration from other designers that had incorporated similar elements into their designs and stumbled upon a recent project in Melbourne called Nightingale by Breathe Architecture. In this project, the architects had left exposed concrete ceilings in each apartment, with mock-ups featuring Scandinavian-inspired furniture. From this, I came up with three possible design styles that would complement the space. Scandinavian, Japandi, or Contemporary Industrial. A Scandinavian interior would work well, as it is a minimalistic-leaning style that is all about bringing interior design back to basics, whilst creating a feeling of coziness in the home. These interiors often feature a crisp white base with natural elements woven in, which would work well with the existing clean lines of the space, the white walls, and the timber floors. Alternatively, Japandi would work well as it is a fusion of Japanese and Scandinavian design. It blends the Nordic concept of Hugo with the Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi, which is all about finding beauty in the imperfect. This would work well with the exposed concrete ceiling and the flooring grains. Finally, a hybrid contemporary industrial style will also work in this space, as it is a raw, edgy style that often features exposed ceilings. For the first layout, I went for a Scandinavian style featuring a more traditional setup, with a couch facing a TV, an armchair, a storage unit, and a study desk. Since there was limited space, I thought an oak leaning desk in the corner of the room would make for a nice workspace as plenty of natural light streams there. These types of desks have quite a narrow profile as they get healthcare support from leaning against the wall, rather than from standing on four legs, which is perfect for a small apartment like this one. This also allowed the maximum amount of light to enter from the window. In the center of the open plan room, I put a standard cream sofa, double marble coffee table, and TV unit all with oak features to unify the space with natural elements that are characteristic of Scandinavian design. One important thing here is sizing. And based on the measurements I received, my recommendation for this space is a standard 2.5 or 3-seater sofa, about 80 to 90 inches wide. Since the dining table wasn't necessary, I thought having a sideboard or storage unit with wall shelving above it would be a nice place to display books and decor. It could also be used for a coffee bar or as a bar for drinks. Again, this will be in an oak finish to complement the other pieces in the space. For the second layout, I lean more into the contemporary industrial style with a hint of Japandi and greater focus on entertaining. In the corner of the room, I place a circular dining table featuring a wooden slat base to complement the timber floor. Around it, I put a custom bench with a wall-mounted upholstery backrest, often known as a banquet, as well as two black stained chairs with rattan backrest. I thought this corner nook would be perfect for working on a laptop and allow for more flexibility as it resembles a hot desk situation in co-working spaces. You can sit facing outwards, towards the window, or facing the wall instead of just being stuck always looking at the wall like the previous layout. The biggest addition to this layout was the pendant light just above the dining table. Since the view is not an open vista, adding a small pendant here wouldn't be disadvantageous, but rather adds another layer of visual interest to the space. The middle section is where the main lounge area is, but this time it is built for conversation rather than TV watching. I placed two armchairs facing a leather couch, a staple industrial piece, as well as a gallery wall behind it to add character to the space. The option is always there for the gallery wall to be replaced with a framed TV. 
Next to the lounge is a black metal shelving and storage unit that acts as a feature upon entering the room. On both layouts, I place a bench by the glass partition in the hallway with a couple of hooks for hanging coats or hats. Once everything was in place, I added a few decor items to enhance the space and added skirting to the floor to make it look more realistic. I then exported the render into Adobe Lightroom to fix the color and lighting. Taking into account existing features or architectural elements and having a plan before tackling a project will often result in a more cohesive design and a space that will enhance your everyday life. The challenge with doing a virtual makeover is sourcing for similar items in the local market. Here are some of my recommendations for similar pieces you can get in Canada or the United States. First, let's start with the sofa. The Lapis Serene Grey Sofa by Article in a light grey linen look fabric. The Hague Mid-Century Apartment Sofa by Crate and Barrel with flared arms in an ivory boucle fabric. The Well Sofa with Natural Leg Finish by Crate and Barrel in twill fabric. I kinda like all three options here, depending if you want a brighter or cozier feel. The Burard Sea Salt Grey Sofa by Article. And the Lucia Cane Sofa by Castlery that has cane armrest and warm grey upholstery. This is the closest look to the render. I like both the black and white wash option here, depending on the overall color theme you're going for. For the leaning desk, some of my recommendations are the housing desk from Crate and Barrel, which has a white drawer and more rounded corners for a softer look. The Helix 70 inch walnut desk from CB2 that has more of an industrial vibe. The Fan Tall leaning desk by Article in Light Oak, which is a bit wider than the rest and provides a bit more storage. And the Folk Leather desk by Herman Miller that is more minimalist with no drawers. As it is positioned right in the middle of the room, I like the idea of the coffee table as sort of a centerpiece. The Oasis Round Wood Coffee Table by Crate and Barrel with paired column legs and a marble top. The Willem Round Coffee Table by Lulu and Georgia with a marble top and three framing oak legs. The Wade Nesting Coffee Table by Rejuvenation. I like the fact that this comes in three different colors and three different diameter and height, so you can nest them or use the smaller one as a side table. The round natural wood Ziki coffee table by Walt Market with a clean minimalist silhouette and curved leg post. And both the Eden and native coffee tables by Danish brand Sketch Interior, which also comes in various sizes and tops. For the rugs, natural materials like jute and wool are my preference here. Depending on the amount of natural light, you can always go for a darker color for a moodier vibe. Finally, lamps. Most of the models I use are models from popular brands such as the Grasshopper Lamp from Gooby, Reverse Table Lamp in Travertine from Menu, Neoworks Kizu Table Lamp which I personally owned, and Model 265 Lamp by Paolo Rizzato for floss. To save on cost, you can always find renditions or replicas of the original, or even purchase them secondhand. All of these recommendations are linked in the description box below if you want to check them out. I would like to know what you guys think of these virtual makeovers, and if this is something you'd like to see more in the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.